the role of an administrator in a school is so critical for a number of different reasons. Um, they model and demonstrate their role as a lead learner and recognizing that as part of a coach and a mentor that they are making some decisions that really impact um, what happens in the classroom as well as establishing and setting a firm vision and communicating that with all of the staff. So in terms of the work of engaging and supporting, it can be something as simplistic as targeting specifically um, elements of your school budget to acquire the resources that are needed in classrooms. It's around targeting and knowing through a gap analysis what's needed and um, what resources are most current and inclusive to support the students. Two more complex decisions around through your literacy walks, how you are monitoring and, and supporting um, and coaching teachers in terms of uh, recognizing the needs of the students within the classrooms, engaging in dialogue around things that are are, uh, are they able to articulate their, their learning needs and their goals? And um, what is it that the teachers are intentionally teaching? And how does that um, focus and shift in terms of the work in the classroom and in, in the supports that's inherent in the, in the school? as well as establishing the vision, which I think is probably the most difficult because you need to do it in a very collaborative fashion where you work with a, a multidisciplinary team, experts from around not only the school but even systems if you have the luxury of those types of supports to come in and really think about the data that you're collecting and is it purposeful and is it meaningful and is it authentic spending some time to really analyze that data and look for the gap analysis and ensure that people uh, are coming to a consensus in terms of understanding around where we need to move forward. So at our school, it was really a focus on a, a huge priority on literacy and literacy achievement of all learners, our at-risk learners, our, our students that are, are, are boys, but it's all, and we really mean all. And a, sincere belief from the, the, the teaching staff that they can do it with sufficient time and support and resources. And what are those and how do we begin to ask um, through relationship building teachers to engage within those conversations about those needs. And, and moving that forward in terms of that monitoring and implementation and how do we go about doing that in a way that people feel that their voices are honored, their expertise is ident has been identified and shared, and that collaboratively we're move taking one step forward, perhaps two steps back every once in a while, but making that one step forward count for something. The case management component where we bring children to the table at our divisional meeting because we're responsible for all children. And we talk about the strengths and the needs of the child, but also around the interests and a more holistic profile of the learner as a, as a, a much more complex person than a series of numbers on a piece of paper. And then we have um, our multidisciplinary team meeting, which is 16, and we have our psychologist and our, our, our speech and language path and our, um, our lead learners in the school and our um, special ed consultant and our curriculum consultant sit and talk to us around um, s um, supports and focuses for additional professional learning that we can release teachers during the day for to develop our professional learning communities. So there's a multi-pronged, multi-faceted approach around how we can begin to monitor um, our, the achievement of our students, as well as one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, with teachers around, sh show me your class profile. Let's talk about who you've deemed to be at risk and why they're at risk and what evidence uh, can you bring to support that piece. More importantly, what are we doing about it? And how can I support in that role through resource, through time, through connecting with experts in the field or within the school to allow for that teacher to feel the most empowered they can be to support that child or perhaps allocating additional educational assistance support or um, other resources that are, are within my grasp to support that, that child and that achievement. We also spend a significant amount of time around this topic engaging community in terms of a shared role and responsibility. So um, whether it's our early years program where we have parents and children come together for two hours every day and engage in a, a, a literacy rich programming um, together and sharing in that language, uh, that literacy 
um, that richness, whether it be in English or in their home language, whether it's through opening up our school library every uh, three nights out of the week for two hours, where children and community members can access the, the print materials and the technology materials within our school, whether it's in hosting very specific professional development opportunities within the parents as our engaging partners, or whether it's our community dinners held once a month, where 400 members of our community and students show up to engage in, 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 in real dialogue about what matters about going to school here and um, the richness of their expectations as well as ours. So there's, there's many things that we can do. Context is really important and your beliefs need to be firmly in, in place. You know that the notion of the distributive leadership model is really critical. We all share a very a many lenses, and I think listening to the various perspectives around how we're going to forge forward on a path, and, and that path may take many turns and, and encounter many obstacles and successes, and to take the time to celebrate. Relationships are critical around um, not developing a praise-dependent culture. It's around an investment, an investment in our students, an investment in our teachers in terms of learning and, and resources that we have the facility to access um, to provide as many opportunities for celebration and success, along with the inherent belief that we can do it. Part of that is in the yes we can philosophy. And so it's not worrying about whether we can or not, it's how we can best do it. It takes time and it's not easy um, and I think that um, for administrators engaging in that journey you need to be able also to count on some pretty significant supports that may be around you. The parent community, the superintendent, uh, curriculum and resource support staff, um, members from special education or your, your regional ac access support. And it's also around holding true to the journey that you put on paper, which is your school plan, and making sure that draft is prominently portrayed on that as a living document to which many voices contribute, and that you monitor it based upon your incremental successes, as opposed to getting to an end and thinking that you've made it. I don't know if you ever really make it in education today. I think one of the most exciting things that we've um, begun to engage in our, uh, our journey for assessment at this point is that in our in our collection of data and in our analyzing of our data and looking for the strengths and needs of students we're really working hard for students to begin to self-advocate for themselves and develop intentional uh, points for their reflection around student improvement. We're really hoping that it comes from the learning intention and the development of success criteria into intentional um, target cards for each and every student because although I understand and respect that this is around at-risk learners and in particular boys and that engagement component um, it's really about every single child all children all teachers and the other piece that I'd like to say just quickly around resources is that when we talk about resources we often think about text resources and there are so many different pieces that make a classroom vibrant and engage kids in learning, whether it be technology and laptop carts and Moodles and blogs and smart boards to um, building upon ebooks to the learning materials and the literacy manipulatives um, that help to sh sh concretely show that they do know and that it's not all about a book or a text. So expanding that definition. Mm -hmm.